geosciences is a broad name for all science disciplines that deals with the study of the head. Even if you are not a geoscientist, it is good to understand how the earth really looks like and what it is made up of. There are internal and external structures of the head. The external structure of the head may sound weird to you though, I just make up the name since external means something outside. The internal structure of the head is what we are used to hearing, which are the structures inside the head. The internal structure of the head can be divided into three main parts, which are the crust, the mantle, and the core. What we all see and the part of the head we are all familiar with is the crust. All human activities, such as building of houses, planting of trees, drilling of oil and water wells, and so on, are done on the head crust. Even if you are a flying being, the earth crust is still very important to you. As important and as sustaining as the earth crust is, it only makes up just 1% by mass of the head's internal structure. Very small but hugely important. There are eight elements that are commonly found in the head crust, and they include oxygen, which we breathe, the silicon, aluminium, calcium for stronger teeth, iron, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. There are two types of crust, the oceanic crust and the continental crust. The oceanic crust is denser, thinner, about 5 to 10 kilometers thick, and mainly composed of basalt. Continental crust is less dense, Thicker, about 30 to 70 km thick, and mainly composed of granite. Why is it that the thinner oceanic crust is denser than the thicker continental crust? We will discuss it in the crust tutorial. The mantle comes after the crust. The boundary between the crust and the mantle is called the Mohorovivik discontinuity. I had to cram that before pronouncing. It's kind of close to the name of one of my favorite football players, Luka Modric. It is a Croatian name after the seismologist that discovered it. It is simply called Moho Discontinuity. By the way, how are scientists able to study the internal part of the head? It's simple. They send signals into the head and record them as they bounce back to the surface of the head. Because the velocity at which they travel through different medium varies, the arrival time at the head surface also varies. The discontinuity is the depth at which there is an abrupt change in the velocity of these recorded signals. The more discontinuity defines the boundary between the head cross and the mantle. The mantle is hot and represents a whole of about 84% of the head by mass. Of course, you know that the deeper you go, the hotter it becomes. The temperature of the mantle varies from 1000 degrees Celsius to 3700 degrees Celsius. The mantle is divided into the upper and the lower mantle separated by a transition zone. The distinction between these two layers is also caused by change in seismic signals sent into the earth. The crust and the upper part of the mantle makes up the lithosphere, which is the rigid part of the head. We will discuss more about the mantle in another tutorial. Now to the innermost part of the head, which is the core. Gutenberg discontinuity separates the mantle and the core. Head core, based on some calculations and observations, is said to be composed mainly of iron and nickel alloy. It is about 2,900 kilometers below the head surface and has a radius of about 3,000 
485 kilometers. That's almost the same distance between Nigeria and Kenya in the easternmost part of Africa. The coal is the earth source of internal heat because it contains radioactive materials which release heat as they break down into stable substances. The core is divided into two different zones. The outer core is liquid because the temperature there is adequate to melt the iron nickel alloy. However, the inner core is solid even though its temperature is higher than the outer core. In the inner core, tremendous pressure produced by the weight of the overlying rock is strong enough to pack the atoms together and keep it solid. One other interesting thing is that the planet Earth and the core are not of the same age. The Earth is older than the core. How is that possible? We will discuss it in the core tutorial. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and you have learned something. If you have a question for me, put in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel.